Today, information is everywhere. In a world full of clutter, journalists across the country recognize the need for accurate, up-to-date information that is available in a matter of seconds. Today, we are proud to present an app that makes journalists' lives easier with just one tap, Debrief. When journalists find themselves in a new city, they don't often have time to orient themselves, especially in the context of breaking news or natural disaster. Debrief aggregates essential city information to help orient a journalist to a new city, giving a brief on relevant information, alleviating the time spent that they need to spend learning. Our app provides contextual information, relevant news articles pertaining to an area, and tweets concerning the local discussion. But before we get into how this app works, we'd like to take a second to introduce ourselves. My name is Natalie Edelstein. I'm a senior convergence journalism and political science student. I'm Joey Frank. I'm Nathan Schlechty. And I'm Ian Smith, and the three of us are junior computer science students. Debrief provides a journalist with all the basic information they would need simply upon opening the app. Meet James. James is a sports journalist traveling to Columbia for the very first time. He's going to cover a story on the Porter family. And while he is very well versed in the sports world, he knows very little about the city of Columbia. Unfortunately, James doesn't really have time to sift through the thousands of local articles written about the Porter family. And he only has 48 hours before he meets his deadline. Using Debrief, James can orient himself with one tap. The first thing James is greeted with when he opens the app is the home page. Within seconds, the home page will automatically load with information based on his current location. Here, he's able to view several items that will begin to acclimate him to Columbia. At the very top, James is presented with the city name and the state, along with a small indicator for the weather. Below, he can view the current population, the local NPR station, and a brief description of the area. All of this data is presented above a map that can help James orient himself in the city no matter where he is. In the next tab, James has access to a list of relevant stories concerning his location. Since he's in Columbia, he will likely see articles from outlets such as the Columbia Tribune, Missourian, Maneater, or Associated Press. Tapping on a story would take him directly to the article. Examples of articles relevant to Columbia would likely concern the University of Missouri. At the top, you can see how an article concerns the, that student body elections were briefly canceled. This is relevant news to the University of Missouri and could be used by James to introduce context of Columbia into more of his writings. Because the university is such an integral part of Columbia, you can expect to see several other stories concerning Mizzou. In the other tab, local tweets are collected for James to view and they can be sorted by relevance or geographic location. This ensures that James can see tweets of all sorts, ranging from reliable news sources or to the citizens of the area. The ability to peek into local discussion is important in order to ensure that the emotions of its residents are properly represented within the news. Moreover, James's problem is not unique. James is just one of hundreds of journalists who travel to new cities every single day. Additionally, the field of journalism is changing, and rapidly at that. According to Pew Research, the size of newsrooms across the country has been on steady decline for the past five years. Behind me, you can see a graph from their State of the News report for 2017, which shows the total number of US newsroom employees on decline since 2012. Unfortunately, this, pro this problem doesn't show signs of stopping anytime soon. Today, hundreds of newsrooms find themselves in this state of transition. Research and work that have might once been split among two or three journalists is now left solely up to one. This is where Debrief comes in. Debrief allows a journalist to spend, whoa. Debrief allows a journalist to spend more time in the city doing the reporting they need done and less time worrying about sifting through local coverage or finding relevant information to them. Moreover, Debrief is especially useful for newsrooms in transition because it solves for more than just one issue. Think back to the protests two years ago at the University of Missouri's campus. We saw serious instances of parachute journalism. Parachute journalism is the idea of sending a reporter into a location where they have little knowledge and lack of experience. This, combined with tight deadlines, often leads to inaccurate and distorted news coverage. If the journalists that had been flown into the University of Missouri had debrief at their hands, they would have had time to go through the local coverage that was presented to them immediately upon opening the app. This local coverage was written by journalists who had more context on the issue and understood the issue a little bit more holistically. This is not to say the issue wouldn't have been covered. Instead, it would have just been given a more well-rounded lens. Without debrief, looking up local coverage can take a very long time. But with debrief, all it takes is a tap. 
In order to get to brief into the hands of freelance journalists and newsrooms alike, we believe a subscription-based service is the business model to go for. There will be a monthly fee for users to gain access to debrief services. There will be two subscription tiers. There will be a monthly option for the individual user and also a bulk option for the newsroom. For both newsrooms and individuals alike, the subscription service provides convenience and a more manageable reoccurring price so it can be easily budgeted. In the research we conducted, we discovered that people are more willing to pay for an app if they know exactly what they're paying for. So with this in mind, we're going to provide a free seven-day trial for Debrief to, so that researchers, rather uh, reporters, can take Debrief with them to new cities. Debrief was built with the traveling journalist in mind. We sent surveys to newsrooms of all sizes across the country and conducted interviews with professional journalists who currently work in the field. While our respondents and surveys were answered by a ton of people, the majority of respondents that we found were 25 to 34 and in some capacity worked in the journalism field. What we found was that an overwhelming majority of journalists would turn to an app in a case of an emergency or when visiting, visiting a new city. Moreover, 60% told us that an app that could aggregate social media conversation around a topic or local discussion would be extremely useful. The combination of interviews and surveys that we did gave us good insight to what journalists currently working in the field really want. There is a demonstrated need from smaller newsrooms like the Colorado Springs Gazette to larger legacy newsrooms like the Chicago Tribune for help as they go through these tough transitions. This is not to say that Debrief replaces a journalist, fact checker, or member of an editorial staff, but rather Debrief makes the life of a traveling journalist significantly easier. Without Debrief, extra time is spent searching for each specific piece of information regarding your current location. So for example, first James would uh, look for relevant news stories. Then he would have to look up census information to find the population. To get tweets and view public discussion, he would have to turn to another application. Finally, to get a brief description of the city that he's at, he'd have to look to Wikipedia. If I were James, I would hate having to switch between these various apps just to find more information on where I am right now. To solve this problem, Debrief aggregates and then analyzes this data. As seen in this graphic, when using Debrief, a user only interfaces with our cloud platform. On our end, we plan to make a series of data calls to an, um, based on a user's current city, geolocation, and any other additional preference that they may set within the app to narrow the focus of their information. Right now, our, our focus is narrowed to several um, to four API endpoints, the United States Census Information, News API, Twitter, and Wikipedia. Our cloud works to mitigate the cost of thousands of requests to these data endpoints. We will implement the ability to store the most recent results from a search, and then be able to distribute them straight from our servers. But in order to separate us from these simple data distribution sources, our platform will also have the ability to do additional analysis and computation on this data. We plan to analyze content, such as articles and tweets, in order to find new journalism trends, to instantly provide users with more relevant information to them. Eventually, we will use trending activity to generate heat maps to be able to give users specific interest locations right within the app. Since we deal a good amount with personalized user data, security is a major concern of ours. All communication between Debrief and our cloud servers will be completely encrypted, ensuring the anonymity and safety of our users. We plan to completely decouple the user from any of their data so that it can never be used to personally identify them. With Debrief, we have a great plan for the future. Currently, Debrief is searching for investors. In three months from now, we hope to have a fully developed beta app ready to use. Ideally, in six months, we would like to leverage the School of Journalism's connections to get our beta app licensed out to the Associated Press or Thomson Reuters for their journalists to use. In nine months, we will have a fully developed app ready to be licensed by everyone. And a year from today, we hope to have developed partnerships with newsrooms who helped us craft the app, like Chicago Tribune or Kansas City Star. As we move forward, Debrief has a lot of potential for future improvements. In the future, we hope to add a pin board that will allow the user to save certain articles or tweets for future reference. We also hope to add features that will allow the user to add preferences in order to filter, filter what news is relevant to them based on something like sports or politics. This will allow the user to curate the app to suit their needs exactly. We also hope to add features along the lines of showing where good internet locations are, a heat map of social media activity, and although our app currently only works in the United States, we'd hope to expand internationally, where an app like this would be invaluable in the hands of foreign correspondents. 
With feedback from our beta, we'll learn from the users on what features are most requested and add those as time goes on. Regardless of what gets added though, the information we currently have is pulled from a host of very reliable sources and provides a solid foundation for future improvement. With the brief in hand, journalists like James can stop worrying about orienting themselves so much and they can spend more time reporting with confidence in a new city. It's time to cut through the clutter with Debrief. Debrief. Thank you for listening.